What's going on everybody? Welcome to a new video. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you my favorite angles for filming while cycling with the Insta360 ONE X2 camera. I was very skeptical in the beginning about this camera. I had previously in my life owned some 360 cameras and they were very clunky and hard to use. But I was seeing all this incredible footage, especially cycling coming from people who were using this camera. So I said, okay, let's give this a go. And to be honest, this is not a sponsored video, but I have been blown away by this camera. This piece of tech really shines in some situations, one of which is on the bike. All these angles are made possible and awesome because Insta360 has an incredible technology in it that cancels out the Insta360 pole to which the camera is attached. So basically, anywhere you put this camera, you will not see that it is attached to this pole. But here is a series of my favorite angles that I've tested up to this point. First off, I would divide the types of angles in two categories, fixed mount and free. Fixed angles are all those angles that are either attached to the frame of the bike or to the rider, whereas free are the ones that don't use any mounts and simply use the Insta360 ONE X2 stick. Starting off from the fixed angles, my favorite ones are, number one is what I dubbed the unicorn mount. Basically the unicorn mount utilizes Insta360's motorcycle mount, this one right here, to attach the camera to the front of the bike precisely underneath the stem and then attaching the pole to the motorcycle mount and fully extending it right in front of the bike. This angle is absolutely insane. This angle takes advantage of the technology that cancels out the E360 pole that I talked about before and makes it like a third person front view of someone filming the rider. It can catch a super cool angle of the rider from the front and the surroundings. I use it often when I'm riding with Brina to show that we are together and when we are riding in a beautiful spot to see us both riding and the scenery. This angle is a great one that can be used on every ride and looks absolutely terrific. The downside of this shot is that it needs the mount to be attached to the front of the frame and the pole to be sticking out, which is not really super, super user friendly when you're just riding outside and chilling. The crazy thing about the unicorn style mount is that I thought it was gonna collapse and fall down, but in reality, even catching bumps, it just stays put. The Insta360 motorcycle mount is really high quality, sturdy, and can really hold up even with bumps. The pole extended with the Insta on top, it can get kind of heavy. That's actually why I chose to get the original Insta360 motorcycle mount because it looked really sturdy. It looked like it was made for this job. And I must say that I can recommend it because it really holds up perfectly and works great. The point of view shot. For the point of view shot, we can use a chest vest to mount the Insta360 ONE X2 to our chest. This allows to get a really immersive point of view shot with arms, handlebars, and the route we are cycling in. This I believe to be incredibly powerful to make it really immersive. I really like cycling shots and cycling POV shots where you can see parts of the bike. So in this case, it would be the handlebars, the hands, the arms of the rider, and the route. I use it a lot for off-road riding, and I'm really happy with the results. The way this shot really shines is for social media use. So for social media vertical video, it is really, really perfect. This is made possible by the fact that the Insta360 ONE X2 films a 360 video that then can be cropped in 16 by nine or nine by 16 for social media. And this is incredibly powerful. You can basically have one footage with the different outputs. So for YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and so on, without having to worry about how you're framing the shot because you can do all of that in post-production. This angle with the Insta is, in my opinion, better than the GoPro angle. It allows for a more immersive experience. GoPro, I must admit, has a slightly higher quality, but I believe the Insta, how it catches the riding, how the scenery is flowing past, is absolutely one step ahead. The flexibility of reframing in post-production with the Insta is another really, really big factor that makes this my go-to for point of view shots. The back pole video game mount. So using the Insta motorcycle mount, we can attach it to our seat post, attach the pole to the mount and extend it behind us. This way we can get a shot that looks a bit like a third person style video game of us riding. This is a very cool shot, it needs to be tweaked a bit with the reframing, but it definitely has a place during rides. It can really help tell a story about where we are, where we're going and make the viewer really feel that they are like following us with a drone or something. The sweeping shot. If we keep the motorcycle mount attached to our seat post, but flip the pole and turn it down towards the ground and to one side, we can get a very cool sweeping shot with the camera close to the ground 
So we can see the pedal strokes, we can see the ground moving really fast beneath us, and this shot also can have some great results. The only problems that I see with this shot is that it can be a bit risky to have the camera that close to the ground, it can be prone to bumps, and also being to one side, it needs to be something that we think about. These are the best and most practical shots that I've found up to this point. One thing that I would say is that fixed shots with the Insta360 require some degree of work. It is not something that I would personally do on any leisurely ride. I personally do it just when I really need to shoot something. And this is because A, the mount is heavy. The motorcycle mount is kind of heavy and it needs to be clamped on, so it needs to be put on, taken off. So it's great for when we are maybe going on an epic ride, but not for like everyday use. And here we come into everyday use, so basically free angles, angles that do not use a mount. So only using these two pieces of gear, Insta and the power of the pole, can really give astonishing results. Attaching the pole and extending it is something that doesn't require any mounts. And we can hold this basically wherever we want. By doing this, we can get some variation of the fixed shots, but maybe for less time. So basically we can get a unicorn style mount shot just by holding the stick in our hand and pointing it out to the front. It requires a bit of trial and error, but it really can be done. The problem is that it can't be done for a long period of time. It can be done maybe for 30 seconds to one minute, but not much longer. Whereas the unicorn style mount, it can stay there for 30, 40 minutes. So it's as simple as that. No mounts needed, just extending the pole, holding our hands on the handlebars and pointing the pole forward. You need to test it out a little bit, but you can get some really amazing shots. With free shots, the only thing that I would be careful about is to try and get them to look natural. So the thing that must be taken care of is to not have like hands in crazy places because that is gonna show up. But with some angles, it is possible to keep a natural position on the bike while still getting some awesome, awesome footage. That looks like basically someone else is filming us and we can get some outstanding angles, but just doing it ourselves, DIY or die basically. Another great angle is holding the pole in my hand and pointing it backwards and down. And holding the Insta this way can get some really, really dynamic shots of the pedal stroke. With the reframing we can do in post, this can get really interesting. We can pan up and pan down or pan to the right and to the left and get some really dynamic and action shots of the pedal stroke. One thing that needs to be said is that with this angle, we need to be careful because the camera is gonna be close to the ground and we have to be careful not to hit rocks or to hit things that might be close to our side. Another angle that I actually really, really like, I call it the hobo angle. And that is basically just with the Insta360 pole slumped over one of our shoulders, pointing back and to one side. I would keep it to one side so I could get the angle of the rider that has the hand on the handlebars and you can't see that the other arm is not on the handlebars. And this shot is absolutely dope. It's kind of like the video game style mount, but it can be done on your own, no mounts needed, and can get some very cool shots. I use this mostly when I'm getting to some place, to a new place, so I'll just sling it over my shoulder and I can get a big overview of the road that we're doing, the rider, and what we are seeing. This is great for reveal shots when you reach like the end of the climb or the end of the ride to show where we are. The drone shot. So basically this shot is extremely simple. What you do is extend the pole to the max and put it all the way up. This shot is very, very cool because it can look like it's a drone flying on the street following the rider in front of you. I did some of these shots with Brina who was riding in front of me and I'm so stoked on the results. I think it can really give an incredible perspective and point of view without having to bring out a drone, which is absolutely awesome. More time riding, less time setting up gadgets and stuff for getting basically the same shot. Another angle that I tried out is very, very simple. You basically just extend the pole, point it backwards and just put it on the saddle and sit on it. And this basically means that you are just pedaling and this can also make for some interesting shots. The thing that I would say is that the Insta really shines when it is at chest level because the proportions can get really morphed with the 360 video. So holding it a bit more up usually is a bit better for the proportions of the rider, but this one can be like a crazy shot. It's worth testing out, I believe. So those were some of my favorite shots that I can get cycling with the Insta360 ONE X2. I really was blown away by this piece of technology. I think 360 cameras will be a big part of the future. I really see it growing and expanding as a business. And that is because the hardest part of 360 video is the post-production. The post-production used to be an absolute nightmare with 360 cameras. But what Insta360 has done is to make their application so user-friendly and really easy to use, easy to transfer files, easy to take screenshots. 
So that part of the process, which used to be really, really hard to do, now is fairly easy to do and it is fairly accessible. So it's easy for anyone to get great shots for social media of awesome things that they're doing, awesome rides, awesome hikes, awesome anything that you're doing basically that is action related with this tiny little camera, which is so small, it fits in your pocket, it weighs nothing, and it can get some truly outstanding shots. Another big reason why these shots can be done is because the stabilization on the Insta360 is amazing. Flow state stabilization is what it's dubbed, it's proprietary technology, and it can get shots that would be wonky and moving really, really steady. So that really shines on the bike. The one downside that I would say of the Insta360 ONE X2 compared to the GoPro is that the GoPro is incredibly sturdy. The GoPro could resist anything, whereas the Insta360 with its perfect lens, it looks a bit more fragile, let's say, but this is all speculation at this point because I still haven't had any experience with that, but I will keep you posted. One word of caution is regarding shadows. So basically, the Insta360 pole will be cancelled out from the shot, but the shadows won't. So sometimes you will have the rider with the shadow on the ground, and it's not like bad or anything, it's just it's something that I try and avoid. I don't really like using it that much. It kind of ruins the magic of how the shot was created, because you give away that it was done with the 360 camera. But I mean, that's obvious anyway, so. So I love it when a piece of technology this small that can fit in our jersey pocket comes along and can give these incredible results. I'm looking forward to using this a lot more. I've been really testing it out for one month and to be honest, during this month, this has been my go-to camera when I go out cycling. It is so much fun. I can get like really creative shots, immersive style video that I can repurpose for many different social media outputs. So I'm really, really stoked on this camera. I'm so glad that I got it. I will try and make a full review, but in this moment, if you are thinking if this camera is worth it or not, I say it is worth it. So what do you guys think? Did I miss any great angles? Let me know in the comments and stay tuned if you want to see more Insta360 ONE X2 footage and videos coming your way. Thanks for watching as always, and I will see you in the next video.